Hi, I'm Austin Shirley, Vice President Engineering of the USST, and this is our video for the URC Critical Design Review. Last year was the first time we entered a rover into the competition, and it was definitely a great experience to see exactly how our design performed all the competition tasks. Uh, this year, we were able to do a complete redesign, which means we were able to look back on all of our strengths and weaknesses of the previous design, uh, but also spend a little more time focusing on innovation and manufacturability, uh, especially trying to make best use we possibly can of all the special tools available here at the University of Saskatchewan. Uh, one of the things we're really excited about our design this year is the use of carbon fiber in the chassis. Uh, we are able to do a lot of destructive testing and comparative testing to aluminum and we're very pleased with the results. Uh, we've been able to reduce the weight of the rover by 50% and at the same time make a lot better use of the tools we have here at the USSD. For example, our 3D printer which we're able to make very strong joints uh, very quickly and quite cheaply. Uh, it also leaves a lot of room for improvement next year. Uh, we're hoping to be able to expand this into a unibody design process and uh, reduce weight even further. We were quite happy last year with the way the rocker bogey suspension performed, so we've definitely taken a really iterative approach to this part of the design. There are three main areas of improvement. The differential is now using helical gears, allowing for much tighter tolerances in the whole system. With the help of simulations, we developed an aluminum plate suspension arm instead of using aluminum tubing, and this gets rid of a lot of the unwanted forces in our suspension, and it really makes the rover a much more stable platform. And finally, the in-wheel motors we're really excited about. Last year's we had some issues uh, navigating rock fields. Uh, this year we should have no problem with that. The motors are completely protected inside of the hub of the wheel. This should allow us to drive pretty much wherever we want as long as our rover can fit over the rocks. The robotic arm is a really important part of a lot of the challenges, so we're really lucky to have a group of our members able to do a full detailed design as part of a final project. They were able to solve a lot of the problems we had last year and also do a full kinematic analysis, allowing us to provide a really familiar video game-like interface for controlling the arm, uh, which is going to be really important for saving precious seconds during those challenges. An interesting challenge we faced last year was the difficulty of navigating using a video feed in things like judging obstacles and distances. In order to combat this problem, we have developed a 3D first-person video system using a binocular camera on a gimbal, head tracking, and the Oculus Rift in order to place the operator inside of the rover and naturally make these judgments on a split-second basis. It's a very surreal experience. For the science task this year, we will be taking a very hands-off approach to analysis. Collection will be done with a special drill in order to make sure the layers of soil are maintained. Then we will analyze the absorption of specific wavelengths of laser light in order to determine the presence of NH bonds as well as bound water in organic molecules. Probes will also be present on our sampling tool, allowing us to determine pH and soil humidity quickly and easily on multiple sites. Finally, because our sample has not been disturbed, we will be able to use classical chemical techniques in order to verify the results obtained in the field. There will also be many Raspberry Pi cameras all over the rover with different types of lenses, taking pictures continuously as we search for and select a sample. With the data we've collected last year, we've been able to do a complete redesign of the electrical and software systems. On the electrical side, we've had a lot of fun with the laser cutter, developing a photolithography type approach to developing custom PCBs and making a more compact and reliable design. The software has received a complete rewrite. We stuck with Python, but moved on to the Kivi library, allowing us to make use of OpenGL graphics, as well as much more complicated and beautiful user interface designs. On both the rover and on the base station, uh, we have gone with a multi-threaded approach to software, allowing different systems to have different priorities and wait times, and allow smooth and continuous operation of the rover. On the rover itself, we've also distributed the load onto smaller microcontrollers in order to take care of the wheels, the arms, and the sensors. This is really critical in order to provide real-time control for as many systems as possible over the limited bandwidth we have for our long distance communications. Overall, our rover this year is smaller, significantly lighter with a lower center of gravity, more integrated electronic systems, more reliable computer systems and software, refined control systems for the arm using kinematic analysis and traction control on the wheels, 3D first person video, improved communications, and a whole bunch more experience. We've also developed a lot of new relationships with sponsors, are in the middle of a big fundraising campaign, have brought some new members onto the team, the 2015 design is looking really cool, we think it's very competitive, and are looking forward to being part of the 2015 University Rover Challenge. Thank you.